I'm back with the final paper drafts of the plans for the Innsmouth project. Hi, welcome back to another Terrence Gapes video. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I always mean that. It's so wonderful that you've taken some slice of your world, some slice of time, always precious, to uh, join me and see uh, what I have been working on. If you missed my sort of mini video that said why I am was gone for that week, plus this week, uh, it is because I was doing some renovations on the bathroom. Uh, not, a, not a complete remodel, uh, but you know, like a new medicine cabinet and a new vanity and you know, painting. And, uh, and of course that took me longer than I expected because that's me. And this means that I am now back on a regular schedule, uh, back on course after a two week hiatus. After the last video that I did, uh, on the actual drafts, my first draft, a uh, viewer said that they thought it was important that I do a top down, I think more than one. And I'm glad they said that because I was kind of hemming and hawing on it. And I do think it was really, really important. Uh, so without talking about it here, let's go over to the bench and I'll show you why I thought it was important and what I did. So here you see a top-down view of the diorama, my first initial plans for that at the very least. A uh, couple uh, points of interest. One is that I moved these uh, buildings back to give a little more variety to the faces of the buildings when you're viewing the uh, scene. And I also am toying with um, changing the roof line here to have a shorter uh, angle, uh, steeper pitch that's shorter, and then a, a longer uh, pitch that's a little wider that might change the look of this building and give me some line of sight play. Uh, that's sort of a little experimental in my mind. And I felt like I should have the peaks of these buildings in the frame, and I was putting in the stairs for the wharf. Remember, the wharf is uh, lower and than the road. And I was trying to see how the, the, the tour bus, that's what I'm calling it, trying to, would go around that and whether there would be enough space for that. That became an issue. And I realized that I need to figure out the size of this object right now before I continue because it affects the spacing and, and everything else that's going on in the scene. Uh, plus, it's really going to be the focal point. So I decided to map out this cart. In order to figure out how big the cart would be, I need to know what the dimensions of the minis are. And I'm using this mini. This is an old Warhammer model. Uh, this is um, uh, 28 millimeters to the top of the head. So this is a, a true 28 millimeter model. Of course, there's ver variations, some measure to the eye or whatever, but this is to the top of the head, and I think this is going to represent pretty close to the minis that I've been looking at. In order to know exactly how big the cart is, I have to know all the proportions of this mini, so I know how wide the seats need to be, um, how how many I can fit across if they're shoulder to shoulder and I want three passengers, how's that width going to look, um, how much space needs to be between their feet when they're facing each other in the seats. In order to do that, I measured every single little spot on this miniature, except for his head, uh, you know, from the waist to the knees and the chest to the back and, you know, thickness, right? How how. All of those things affect the seating, which drives the dimensions of the tour bus significantly. I'm not going to go over all of these, of course. If you'd like to see what I measured, you can freeze frame it here and take a look for yourself. And then I also gave some thought to the carriage uh, sidewalls and then did a little bit of the, the total width measurements here. And just before I did that, I also went and checked on lobster traps to get their actual dimensions. Quite a bit of variety in lobster traps, actually. Having that done, I created the top-down view of the uh, tour bus, and this is done uh, to the minimum dimensions I could come up with to fit three rows of seats, which I want, 
Uh, remember threes, fives, these are nice visual groupings. Technically, it's four with the driver, but the driver is very, very small and, and set off. So, And I needed to have a little space in the back for the steam generating punk pipe work that will be the power source for the vehicle. Uh, so I tried to give myself a minimum amount of that that I could work with. And so doing all of this, this fits three people aside when their feet are down, uh, you know, they're when their legs bend over, right? I need, here's the back thickness, here's the thigh thickness, here's the knee and, and shin leg thickness, then there's the feet, right? So there's just a little bit of space in between for passengers to get up and walk in and out. Uh, and then with the thickness of the sidewalls and some proposed dimensions for the wheels, I come up with a vehicle that is six and a half inches long, by two and a half inches wide. That's about the minimum I can work with, I think, to create the, the vehicle that I'm trying to envision. So I took that and then I made a half scale cutout. This is actual size here, so this is full size. And I made a half scale because my map is half scale, my drafts. And that way I could move it around on the map without having to redraw it over and over and get a sense of where it should end up. Having done all of that, this is my final idea for the layout viewed from the top. I fixed the stair problem by lowering the or raising the wharf to street level. This is kind of how I see wharves actually uh, typically shown when I was doing research. They're pretty much at road level. And then there may be piers coming off of it uh, that are lower. And so I decided to capitalize on that and add a pier here, get rid of the boat. I own, The boat was going to be a bitch to build. I wasn't looking forward to it, and I'm glad it's gone. And this also gives me a longer canvas to show the decrepitude of the wharfs and the piers as described in the story as they are basically rotted at the ends and, and falling apart. And this doesn't really give me a lot of space to show that, especially if I'm gonna have people on the wharf. That removal of the stairs though, does not allow me to do much pivoting with the cart because now you can see it looks quite a bit bigger. Uh, so the bus is gonna have to go straight down the road and it's not optimum for me, visual interest wise, but I think it's gonna be the best that I can do. I think it's what I have to do actually. For the road edge, I thought it would be unfinished and um, then I can put in, um, there's like descriptions of, of dead fish and, and, and detritus in some of the lawns. This will give me some space for that and have the road edge deteriorating. Uh, and at some point I will discuss what the road material will be. I've already decided on that, but I won't uh, talk about it just yet. And then I could have, say here, like a little brick pathway coming down from these steps. And that is sort of crumbling and eroding uh, where it meets the road. Uh, but some of them just have a, you know, the dirt, it's sort of a dirt-ish road uh, going right up into the entryway. Decided to put in a little recessed uh, porch here and a little loading ramp for this. This building will be the lobster, the Innsmouth Lobster Fishery. Uh, and that gives me the chance to put a sign on the building that says uh, the diorama is set in Innsmouth. And I now know the rough, so now you can see, right? Here are the dimensions of the miniatures. Here's how much their, their thighs and knees uh, kick out uh, roughly. Work with me. And then I know how big these people are. So now I could put in some approximations for the divers and the scientists and get a better sense of, you know, how the residents are going to look. And knowing the size of the divers, I could get a better sense of how visually they're going to fill this field. Um, and one of the things I was trying to do was to draw sight lines, right? I was thinking like this guy, the divers looking 
this direction and he's looking this direction and he's looking back, right, to add some tension. Like, does the driver see him? Does he see, you know, um, same with the deep one, right, and, and the roof line I had. And I cannot, I spent a couple hours working on the sight lines and, and seeing how these all match up. And I gave up on it because I don't think I can see it in two dimensions, two, two angles, top and side and have them match. So I'm not going to let that be a focus for me, restricting my, my ideas going forward. And when I do the 3d mock-up, which is next, then I can maybe play with that just a little bit. So that gives you a sense of what the spacing of the diorama will look. And the last thing I will mention when I was talking previously about uh, positives and negatives, you know, filling space, right? So, you know, looking here, right, this would be a positive and these are positives and, you know, this would be like a negative. Uh, it occurred to me that I'd be putting in fish in the water and how the fish will be visible from the top is unknown to me. I don't know how opaque the water will be. And so I don't even know really if you're going to be able to see this diver from the top either. This one would be climbing out of the water. So that adds a little interesting hiccup to it. And I'll just have to deal with it as it comes as I, I won't let that drive the water as much as seeing through the water to visualize what's going on underneath it will be the primary importance. So next up will be a 3D mock-up of this. So having seen those plans, I am now going to move to the 3D mock-up. I was, I was almost thinking, oh, do I have to do that, you know? But uh, I'm anxious to get some model. This last two weeks was crazy. I don't know. I, I don't do well with these kinds of distractions. I lock into them and everything falls away. And then when I come back, I'm like, why I haven't been doing this? So... So I'm excited to buy some miniatures because they really herald the beginning of the construction. Plus, there's a lot of work to do on them. But I am going to do a 3D mock-up. And I'm going to make it a join me at the bench. So I will run the cameras while I'm working on it and chat with you a little bit about how that progress is going so you can see some of my thinking as I put it together. So that should be interesting. Uh, makes me think, I, oh, I was thinking about ordering some heavier gauge cardstock. Hmm. And thinking about ordering miniatures, I have scoured, scoured the web looking for steampunk miniature companies. I think I've found them all. Uh, and um, actually, I put a post up on Patreon, the whole list of them. But needless to say, I have the gamut to choose from for miniatures. Um, Hopefully that will give me enough fodder to fill the carriage because those are going to be the most difficult pieces to pose miniatures. So we'll see. And before I go, I just want to say that it is viewers like you that become patrons that really keep this channel going. So you can join Patreon and become a patron for as small as a dollar a month and that level of support makes a big difference. And to become a patron, you can follow that link here. And I think I have it right this time. So my next phase is making that 3D mock-up. And I hope you will come back and join me for that and see me fiddling at the bench because you know that I will be back soon with another Terranscapes video.